Hey guys, I'm going to be bringing you a quick tutorial on how to set up an Unreal script in Visual Studio 2010. Um, I'm doing this because there's not many tutorials out there for the July um, 2012 version of UDK and some settings and stuff have changed so it can be kind of confusing. Alright, so to get started we're obviously going to have to go over some things required to do this tutorial and one thing that you're obviously going to need is the UDK. Um, once again, we're going to be using July 2012, and the link right here will be in the description. So you're just going to click um, this download right here, and you're just going to run through the installation. Next thing you're going to need, all of these links will be in the description by the way. The next thing you're going to need is Visual uh, C++ 2010. Um, when you go to the link, you'll be at the top. You just scroll down until you get to 2010 Express, and you just click C++ and you just click this install now. Very simple installation. Next thing you're going to need is nFringe. Uh, you just click the link and then it's just right here. Just nFringe setup. You run through that installation too. Alright, so now that that's done, first thing we're going to do is we're going to run front end. And what all front end does is it compiles all the Unreal script. And we're just going to do this to you know make sure and be safe and sorry on our UDK installation. So you can just type in front end and then it'll be the first one. Um, and you just click script right here in this top button and then there's a full recompile. And once again it's just going to rebuild the entire engine and make sure basically that everything's there and working right so that we can fix it now and not have to go through all the things that we just did and see what's wrong. Alright, so you'll get a succeeded here, hopefully. If not, you can just rerun the installation, uninstall it and reinstall it, and try again. Um, you can exit out here. And then, next thing to do is go into Visual Studios and create a project. So we're going to click New Project, or File New Project. And then, nFringe will give you this new option called Unreal Script, and then License E Project and I'm just gonna name it my underscore game and for the uh, directory you're just gonna find your UDK installation a lot of people have it in their C drive or whatever their primary disk is and it'll say like UDK in here or it'll be in program files um, mine is in here so I have a couple different ones um, the one you're probably gonna have if you're following along recently is going to be the July one right here um, I have the same thing, just named differently. Uh, you're going to go to that. You're going to click that directory and click Development, Source. And then inside of here, you're just going to click Select File or Folder. Uh, you Don't check these two boxes, and then you can just click OK. Alright, so now it has created our um, project, and we can just exit out of this. And we will come back to it sh shortly. So first... Or next, what we're going to do is we're going to click Computer, uh, go back to your UDK installation, and then you're going to go to Development, Source, and you're going to see this new folder called My Game. This just got created from Visual Studios. Inside here you have uh, two files, this third one you won't see, um, and you can see I have the file extensions on. To do that, all you have to do is click Control Panel, Control Panel, Appearance and Personalization, Folder Options, the View tab on the top, and then you're going to see this uh, Don't Show Hidden Files and Folders or Show Hidden Files and Folders. I always have that on so you can see things like this .suo fold file and Hide Extensions for Known File Types. When you check that, you'll see that those go away and it's really helpful to have those on so just uncheck that box you'll see why in a bit alright so right next what we have to do is we're gonna have to cut and paste the dot sln and dot uc project folder or file so just control x to cut or right click cut and then go back one you'll go up one level to development source and right in here you'll just right click and paste or control v and then all you have to do that you only have to do this one time for the getting your project set up in Visual Studios and you're just gonna double click the .sln file and this will load up Visual Studios with your project and you'll see you'll have all these folders right here inside your uh, project 
And basically all this is is the folder structure of this. And that's just the Unreal Tournament and Unreal Editor scripts. And you'll be able to use those to link up with your scripts that you create to modify the game and whatnot. Alright, so next what we're going to do is we're going to run through the properties on the actual project. So you're going to see the My Game project up here. You just right-click it and go to Properties. Um, first thing what we're going to go to is General at the top. And the UCC path we're going to change. And you're going to go to your UDK directory. So UDK, your directory, um, Binaries, Win32. You're going to scroll down and see win UDK.exe. And if you didn't turn on file extensions, it'll say application right here. And that way you'll know that's the one. So just click that. And it should say that right there for the UCC path. These two should be fine because we moved the two files up a level so it could include all of this stuff. So these two should be fine. And that's all we need for general. Um, you go to build and change the configurations to all configurations. And check these two boxes. Now go to deb debug and then change the start game executable to that same executable that we use in the first part of the properties. So you go to your UDK installation, binaries, Win32 again, and that same exe file. Alright, and I like to load my map at startup. I like to use the dm dot dash deck. I like to start with a specified game type and what we're going to use is we're going to add a specified game type for you to modify. So what we're going to use, it's going to be called my game, which is the name of our project. And then you're going to do a dot to access the game type that we're going to create for a class. And we're just going to name it the name of our project again. But then we're just going to put type at the end. So my underscore game dot my underscore game type. Um, I like to disable sound and disable startup movies. Uh, you want to enable publish mods. I like to force windowed mode because it's just easier so you don't have to wait for it to go full screen. And then you want to open the log so you can type um, a log command to log anything so you can check to see if something's working. And then in the bottom you just type dash log for the additional options. So just click save all on the top. And what we're going to do is we are going to add some files. So right click my game, add new folder. We're going to name this UDK game, just like that. And this is just going to hold default any files, but they're just going to be links. So we're just going to right click that folder, add existing item. And inside this um, folder, what we're going to want to add is inside here, we're going to go to UDK con config and then all of these default files are what you're going to want to add. So it's going to be UDK game, config, and you can see how it's similar right here, UDK game, and then we're going to add a config folder, which I actually forgot to do. So right click UDK game, add new folder, and then just name it config, and then you right click it and click add existing item. And then go back to UDK game in your installation, config, and then You'll see default, and then it'll say some words at the end of it. Um, uh, shift click all of the default files, and then right next to the add, there's this little tiny arrow, and you can see add as link. And when you click that, what that does is it basically just makes a mini shortcut in the UD or in Visual Studios to all these files. So when you click here, it'll it'll show you that file. And it's just linked there, so you can easily access stuff and change things you need to change. Alright, so now that that's done, we are going to have to exit and then reopen Visual Studios. Or save first. You can click this like three little save button to save all. And then you click yes.